r slash ask reddit what activity is socially accepted but actually borderline psychotic the compulsion to put absolutely everything you do and experience on social media for people to enjoy when really you're hoping they'll envy you What's worse is when oversharers have kids, and they post photos of every single thing that their children do with little to no regard for their privacy. Edit. No, I'm not advocating not posting any photos of your children at all. But there are definitely some photos that verge on violating both the boundaries of good taste and your child's privacy. Posting pictures of your kid's birthday party or little league game? Fine. Posting pictures of them naked in the bathtub or sitting on their training potty? UHH. Yes, that shit bugs me the most. Like, I'm glad your mildly autistic 6 you gave himself a bath, but I really don't need to see pictures of it along with a billion t hashtags. Hyper aggressive and infighting behavior in a management role. It's so counterproductive too. Once fear in politics kicks in people people stop warning or helping each other. Suddenly projects start being late and lower quality because people are too scared, or bitter, to mention delays or get help for something they're struggling with. My office is going to hell in a handbasket because of this. One manager in particular is a useless tit, but she uses her power to bully people into submission. Always passes the buck when something goes wrong. 2. I have reported her to HR close to a dozen times for her abusive behavior and I know she has had to take a sensitivity course. The rest of upper management is almost just as bad. Can't wait to get out. Parents not preparing their children for adult life to keep them from moving out. This one boggles my mind. No Jimmy doesn't need to prepare for med school while he's in elementary. But holy crap they can start learning appropriate levels of responsibility. Like picking up after themselves. Putting their shoes and coats away when they come in the house. Bringing dishes to the sink and putting them in the dishwasher. When I was teaching in daycares out of school care. Man. So many of the kids couldn't understand that cleaning up in between activities was also for them. Not just someone else's job. It took a few weeks and they picked up the routine. But the transition for a few was just pulling teeth. I think allowing them to have a more independent social life as they get older is also important too. The fact you have to fork out up to 10k for a proper funeral. Somebody just went through a traumatic loss and now they have to set this shit up. Come on. I'd rather be cremated and dumped into the bay. Becoming a burden is awful. When I'm dead, just throw me in the trash. Instagram influencers who have hundreds of thousands of followers who are literally filming everything they do think. You can tell the people they spend time with are uncomfortable with the constant filming yet they still do it. Not socially aware or just jaff. And it's because people keep watching, viewing living life through someone else's camera and everyone is completely okay with it. Going off of this, musical, lie and live, lie are horrifying to me. I didn't realize these were so huge with young kids until recently. Now I get it. I'm not even surprised there are people who have cult followings of tweens for being attractive and poorly lip syncing. But then they do liver streams on live, lie which is what's creepy to me. For anyone who doesn't know it's very similar to Instagram live, except in addition the little heart button you can pay for gifts. Basically just stickers that stay on the screen for much longer and the streamer gets money from them. Essentially, some of these influencers are just constantly live streaming to a bunch of kids and doing literally nothing but shouting out the people who send the gifts. So there's just thousands of kids paying, most likely with parent money, just to be acknowledged for. 5 seconds by a quasi quasi celebrity. It's kinda cult why and weird and very IRL black mirror reddit. I get it. Yes. Apparently this is like Twitch but without the gaming. It's still ducking weird. Scary bit isn't the streaming. It's that a not insignificant number of the kids watching aren't kids. Those services are pretty much just soft call for pedophiles. Checking people's online status. Last active. Last seen across various social media frequently. Technology is an incredible thing and there is no denying that social media brings us closer to those that are physically further away. But I believe the ability to digitally stalk people plays a major role in social anxiety and psychotic behavior today. Does your username stand for I bet you can't work out what this means? It does indeed. I guess I need to change my username now. Edit. Non-obligatory first gold. Thanks. Kind stranger. 
People who are obsessed with celebrities to the point of following their every move and talking about it with friends. I like to believe that you are anonymous celebrity and this is your moment of reprieve. Did you hear what Muscles McGee said on Reddit today? Jealous couples who keep tabs on each other's every move. Shared Facebook account. Check in by text ever 5 minutes. Dirty looks when somebody attractive walks by. Etc. Seriously. If there's so little trust. Why even be together? Shared Facebook accounts creep me the duck out. Am I speaking with Jimmy? Or Jane? Can I crack a joke? Or will they go insane? Facebook pages for you to I also creep me out. I wasn't allowed to get Facebook because my dad told me they were just going to steal and sell my info. Way to call it. Daddy O. But at 15 I rebelled and made one at a friend's house. So like. When the baby is born so they inherit the account. How do they explain to their friends that their FB account is older than they are? Why don't the parents just post a US pictures to their own page like a regular person who's waiting to meet a little person they made? It doesn't make sense at all to me. The beginning of your comment sounds like the start of some super crazy slam poetry or something. Competitive dog breeding or what's it called? People obsessed with the dog breed's appearance that prioritize aesthetics before health concerns. Just look at the shaffer with its hind legs or pugs who can barely breathe. And not to forget all the other dog breeds with an endless list of health problems. I hate this. My brother spent like $2000 on an English bulldog. It can barely breathe. They have to clean and lube the wrinkles on its snout, wet its nose, bc their tongue is too short to reach, and wipe its butt every single time he shits. It's not meant to naturally exist, on top of all that it's going to get sick a lot and die early. I don't understand the appeal at all. Edit. Now I took a nap and woke up to this blowing up. Listen I love dogs. Even his little dog. It just makes me sad when he visits. We live in the south and it's hot and he can barely breathe as is. My brother takes excellent care of him and loves him like a kid. Which is what really matters. I just personally don't see the appeal of purebred dogs like this. And yes I own dogs. Two actually. Both rescue mutts that I love more than anything. Here's the little guys. Man. If I spend two grand on something the bare minimum is it needs to wipe its own ass. Advertisements for prescription medication. In the US. If you're going to a doctor for a problem why not let the doctor suggest a medication if you need one? I mean the advertisement isn't even aimed at selling the product directly. It's telling you to ask your doctor about it. Why the duck would I want to influence my doctor in a medication choice? They're the one who went to school for it. Not me. Absolutely. The pharmacy industry is crazy. I'm very scared of them. In general. It was one of things I wasn't expecting about US TV when I first visited. We advertise over the counter stuff but no prescription medicines in the UK. Child beauty pageants. Let's overtly sexualize super young children for literally no reason and have their attractiveness judged by adults. Many times men. It gives me chills. Edit. Okay guys. I get it. Women are equal opportunity offenders and not all men are pedophiles. I understand. Please stop messaging me saying I'm a man hating beach. I'm not. Astronomer here. It's actually a bit insane how often you can go to a conference in academia and see some tenured old guy tearing apart some young student with bullying rude behavior for no particularly good reason except a old guy wanting to show he's smart. If said student has the gall to point out the aggressive behavior to anyone present afterwards, you'll get a shrug along with I've known him 10 years and that's just how he is. And maybe mental notes that the student isn't tough enough if they can't handle verbal harassment by a stranger. I'm always a appalled whenever I hear that as an excuse. It would be like saying I've known Uncle Ed all my life. And sure he murders people. But that's just how he is. Edit. While well, I'm at it. Academia just has serious bullying problems in general. Here is one recent case from a Max Planck Institute in Germany. And F Zurich had such bad bullying they shut down the institute this year. Frankly from reading these piece my genuine reaction was identifying with several things the students went through. This wasn't the main reason I left academia, but it was a high contender. I believe professors are allowed to misbehave to a terrifying degree. I can testify it's rampant in the academia of music as well. Many times professors try to toughen us up for a competitive field, but most of it is needless torture. 
putting the entire timeline and life of your child on Facebook while they grow up and have no control over parents posting everything about them at it. Thanks for taking my gold genity. My mom does this with my kid sister. It's kinda unsettling. She's had her own Facebook account since she was born. And yet my mom doesn't have an account because she doesn't want people from high school contacting her and doesn't want people knowing her business. It's the most hypocritical shit I've ever heard. My mom doesn't have a real Facebook because of that but she made one as my old, now past, RIP, cat years and years ago, and now posts as herself but with my cat's name. Honestly I think it's hilarious that my mom has a weeb like Facebook account. The way we treat people on the internet, the complete and utter lack of empathy plus lack of remorse is a psychopathic tray. I hope this gets higher up this comment section. Most of us would never treat people in person the way we do online. Of course there are psychological reasons for that. We evolved to interact in person, and empathy is partly dependent on it, but it only takes a few seconds to take some deep breaths and remember there are real people behind these usernames. I'm not excluding myself from this. To be clear, I've made a concerted effort over the last two years to take those breaths. And I think I've done a really good job, but I still fail on occasion. People that think releasing an unwanted pet into the wild is okay. My ex and his family did this. They had a red healer that they said was useless on the farm so they put him in the back of the ute, drove off into the rural area, kicked him out and laughed as he tried to chase after them while they drove away. He's a domesticated dog. He will die a slow, horrible death from starvation. I still get so upset even now. I never forgave them for what they did. Also saw a video a while back of a lady that lived near a spot where people commonly dumped dogs. A few people kicked the dogs as it tried to get back in their cars. Some dogs chased after their owner's car and got hit by another car. Some dogs stayed in the same spot waiting for their owners to come back and slowly starve to death. Duck those people. Rest in peace Rusty. You will always be a good boy to me. Edit 1. RIP my inbox. I promise I'm reading and replying as fast as I can. Edit 2. Thank you kind stranger for the gold. I don't know what to do with it though. Edit 3. These people were rural Aussie farmers where pets are viewed as property. It's so common out there. Edit 4. Sorry for making so many people angry and or sad. I'm 100% with you but I am glad to say that this is in no way socially accepted where I live. We have almost no strays anywhere and all the people I know treat their pets properly, to the most part. We have no strays around where I live because my mom takes them all in lol. If she finds a cat she feeds it and such and tries to find the owner. If she can't, then she will clean the cat up and take it to the vet to get fixed and get shots. She has kept a couple of them. But usually she finds them new homes. She is a teacher so usually there is another teacher or a kid in their family that wants a kitty. Edit. Thank you to everyone responding. My mom is pretty awesome. It drives my dad crazy. But she keeps doing it. I always name the cats she is helping out. Some of her recent ones are Oscar, Harvey, Toby, Marion, Fury, and Taz. Fury showed up pregnant. She is fixed now. My sister kept one of the kittens and named her Louie. My parents kept Fury. They also chose to keep Toby. She tried to rehome Marion with a teacher friend of hers 5 miles out in the country. Marion walked back to my parents house twice. My son loves her so mom decided to just keep her lol. We don't have any pet shelters around here. So it is a good thing we have her. Treating animals like they are disposable. I worked at PetSmart and the way people treated fish, small animals and birds was terrible. I cried so many times in that store over my role in consigning these animals to neglect and abuse. Management never had my back and wouldn't refuse a sale. There was one time a guy came in with a bag of fish, clearly boiled in the bag because he had left them in the sun in the car. My manager didn't refuse a sale because he had a receipt from the previous day for the fish and we couldn't prove they died like that. The bag was hot to the touch and the water was green. They had clearly not even made it to a tank. So yeah, this. This is psychotic. I don't think I would do well with that job. I already have a low opinion of people as it is. My heart goes out to veterinarians. I can't imagine some of the things they'd have to see and deal with each day. Workaholism. 
taking pride in working 22 hours a day and getting 30 minutes of sleep seems really insane to me. I can understand wanting to make a comfortable living and being passionate about what you do for work but when you can't turn it off and relax it shouldn't be worth celebrating. Source. Just got out of a relationship with a workaholic and I am so much happier. Edit. You'll please put down the workahol. If you know someone who is using and abusing workahol please call 1-800-555-WORK to speak to a workahol addiction specialist. Sometimes it's not the paycheck or better job you're after. It's just a good distraction from the rest of a shitty life. My old boss was the hardest worker I've ever seen. First one in the office and last one out. Super friendly and you can tell she really cared about the company and her team. She killed herself out of the blue this year. Edit. She was the best boss I ever had. Everyone in the company loved her. She was a dream supervisor. It's just so sad she had this private struggle that we were all oblivious to. To film someone during their weakest moment against their will and consent and post it on the www for people's amusement. The justifying argument is that since you are in a public space you have no presumption of privacy and blah blah blah. Filming someone having a meltdown, a medication induced stupor, or other vulnerable moment and putting it online is a terrible act of cruelty. Totally accepted. But if you think about it, borderline psychotic. Related. Filming your own children having a meltdown with the express purpose of mocking them on social media. Or one step further, setting them up to cry and then filming it. For example, Jimmy Kimmel's awful Halloween prank. Sure, children are often ridiculous and it is sometimes funny, but that doesn't mean you get to publicly mock them. Have a giggle with your spouse friends about it and then move on. Keep it off the internet. Breeding and selectively engineering dogs to make them cuter and smaller. It's really weird when you think that people have done this to create dogs that are small enough to fit in your hand or look just like a teddy bear. It's like borderline mad scientist behavior. Especially when you consider that many of these dogs have health problems because of the way they are. And those same people won't eat GMO foods, but are okay with GMO dogs. Yet this is real bad. They've been selectively breeding pugs for centuries and now they are born with respiration problems and can't even give birth naturally due to the size of their head. But some people think they're cute. Mediums or psychics. Who basically make a living preying on vulnerable people who have probably recently lost someone they love dearly. So much they believe some asshole who can't wait to cash in on it. Or yes. Your husband is definitely here, but I hear what he wants to say. I'd like $25 edit. A lot of people pointing out it's similar to religion and can have closure for some people. Which I completely understand 100%. However I personally don't believe any psychic who offers this closure for money is even remotely close to a good person. It's not about the result. It's about the intent of the use of the person who's in a shit place for money. If they get closure great if they don't. Great I still got paid to talk waffle edit too. Surprisingly a lot of people claiming this isn't socially acceptable. Where I'm from there are quite a few who claim to be psychic and have public and private shows at a cost. I saw this yesterday SNL Long Island medium how come nobody ever says your father says that he's completely disappointed in you. Or your wife knows you were banging the babysitter while she was having chemo? I believe that. Being interviewed for just a bit higher than minimum wage job and there being 4 interviewers on the panel. I mean, you're trying to see if this person will be the best fit in your company, so you make them tell you about all their achievements whilst being scrutinized by 4 people, and then not give them the job if they're so nervous they miss out vital info. What interested you in the vacant position? A paycheck. Most of the time. That's the reason. But I don't think anyone actually says this. Instead, you have to think of some bullshit about challenge or some other nonsense. Edit. Well this has been blowing up. Certainly seems to be the case that employers are looking for more enthusiasm but when you aren't even sure what career you want to embark upon, you can find yourself a bit wanting in that department. Dot. I'm a big fan of money. I like it. I use it. I have a little. I keep it in a jar on top of my refrigerator. I'd like to put more in that jar. That's where you come in. Working from 1565 in hopes of having enough income to not go broke till you die. Most likely a decade or so after retirement. Yup die in a nursing home. Spending $20,000 plus on a wedding. 
I'd rather people pony up $20,000 plus so me and the bride can go on a month long honeymoon to anywhere in the world rather than rent a mansion for a few hours so I can feed a couple 100 people. Edit. It has taken me literally 6 hours to understand why people were laughing about feeding a couple 100 people. In my mind I read it as feed a couple hundred people. I definitely know what you mean but the way you worded me and the bride sounds kind of like you're not her spouse and are just going to take her off somewhere just after she was married to another man. Made me chuckle. Reloading and reloading reddit with a right eye casting a glance to the envelope in the corner hoping it is red. This is hilarious to me, because I never expect replies. I see the little red envelope and think, oh shit what did I do? Here you go buddy colon. Dudes in those wingsuits that glide really close to mountains. A lot of them are dead. Can't say it's really socially accepted but I dislike how some people believe that they can bully and harass those working in retail. There are plenty of people who treat service workers as punching bags and the fact that they even see that as an option during an interaction annoys me. And for the most part the employees can't call the person out on their shitty behavior because they might lose their job. It's this whole dance of abuse acceptance from management. Those people are cowards. They bully people who can't fight back for fear of losing their jobs. Most people who treat retail workers like shit would probably never talk that way to people who are on an equal footing. Doing a good deed. Then posting online what a good deed you did so that others could praise you as being a wonderful person. I mean, headbanging is kind odd if you think about it too much. Work in general. Even a basic 9-5. Spending your time doing something you don't like so that you can live, is crazy. Edit. Just for the record. I am not saying that the cavemen had it better or that I want to go out and build my own house and shiv giant tigers to death just to defend myself. I like modern life and am blessed to live in the most peaceful and prosperous time in human history that allows me to grow fat and safe but, as my username checks out, the idea that here in London where I am sat, millions of people all woke at about the same time this morning to travel to their offices that all largely look the same, to then type on computers to do business, talk near the water cooler, to go back to our desks and then all go home largely at the same has to be some kind of mass psychosis. At least when we were fighting bandits and shiving tigers it seemed so much more real. I am well aware that I would most likely ducking hate this should I ever have to do it once. There's a reason people like watching action fantasy films right. I think this only really applies to office drones such as myself. My job could disappear entirely and it would have almost no effect on the world around me. Edit 2. R uh, slash I'm 14 and this is deep edit 3. Thank you stranger for my first gold. I'll destroy you last. I think just reducing working hours would do wonders to the general population. It's so frustrating to complete your work in 5 hours and doing nothing for 3. Healthcare profiteering yes money is needed to develop treatments and garner people's best efforts. My issue is with greed. Fraud and corruption keeping costs astronomical for something many argue should be a fundamental right. Having your dogs in small cramped urban apartments and getting them a script for their anxiety. I'm going to add on people who get dogs as practice for having children. Then after the children are born. Ignore the dog. Same type of people. Here in Wisconsin. Drinking exorbitant amounts of alcohol to the point of blacking out, then waking up, going to brunch while drinking mimosas beer Mrs. Bloody Marys, followed by taking a nap, then going out that night and starting the cycle again except going to a sporting event instead of brunch. These are called weekends. You don't wanna know what we do the other days of the week. Spoiler. Keep drinking. LOL I got a taste of that with my ex and her friends. I have a high tolerance of alcohol but I do not like to drink multiple days throughout the week because I live a pretty healthy lifestyle and it's expensive. But my ex was exactly how you described. Happy hours during the week. Friday or sat gets hammered at bars then Sunday brunch with mimosas or bloody merry. Saturdays she was in a co-ed flag football league. After all their games she would go to the bar with her team and drink probably for 4 HRS if not longer. And then after brunch on Sundays she would go to her fav bar around 8pm to do karaoke and off course drink for 2 HRS. I'm sure she easily wasted $200-$300 on drinking nearly every week. And not just her but her friends. 
I did her schedule one week and felt like shit because I swear I didn't drink that much even when I was in college. And she was doing that nearly every week. And I spent so much money being around her despite splitting the tab. But she was an alcoholic without even realizing it. She used to give me shit when I would drink water when we go out to bars. She's an ex for a reason so we obviously broke up. But her lifestyle was very common among the people ages 23-35 I knew of. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.